Hello everyone, I hope everyone is doing well. Today in a brand new video, I want to briefly discuss the Council of Ephesus, affirming Mephistism or the One Nature Christology, and how Chalcedon contradicts the Council of Ephesus by affirming Diophysitism or a Two Nature Christology, also known as Nestorianism, which is the view that Christ is in two natures and uh, thus is two hypostases by implication or entailment of saying Christ is two natures. Uh, and that is the Chalcedonian position. Unfortunately, uh, and uh, unfortunately, it did contradict the Council of Ephesus position of Christ's nature. Uh, let's take a look here uh, at these uh, conciliar documents. Um, these conciliar documents are letters that were read at the Council of Ephesus. An ecumenical council is infallibly inspired by the Holy Spirit. Thus, by entailment, the letters that are read and accepted in an ecumenical council would be binding and authoritative on everyone who believes in the ecumenical council. And so we want to look at some of the letters that were read at the Council of Ephesus and see what they say. Here are just some excerpts that clearly express a one-nature Christological view and not two natures. This is clear proof of Chalcedon contradicting the Council of Ephesus, to repeat uh, one more time. Uh, again, uh, this, these are letters that are written by the co-presiders and the bishops that attended at the Council of Ephesus. Uh, for example, St. Cyril says in his th third letter to Nestor, is also known as the synodical letter with the 12 anathemas attached to it. He says, the one and only Christ is not twofold, even though he is understood as compounded out of two different elements in an indivisible unity. Just as man is understood as consisting of soul, of soul and body, and yet is not twofold, but rather is one from out of both. And of course, here, uh, the words that are uh, in bold are very important. The prepositions are out of two is also very important because the one nature Christology expresses the phrase one of two, not one in two, to say that there is one nature after the union. And so these are the words that express this one nature Christological view by saying one out of two or one of two, not one in two, like what is in the Chalcedonian definition. And so here St. Cyril is saying very clearly, Christ is not two in any way, not twofold, but compounded out of two. He is one out of two, just like a soul and a body composing a, a one human nature. Um, it's the same thing with the divine and the human natures of Christ, that they uh, are one nature of two, right? Um, he's saying these are not two, uh, yet Christ is not twofold, but rather is one from out of both. Um, in, another, in the same letter to Nestorius, his third letter to Nestorius, St. Cyril says, but being made one according to nature. So St. Cyril is very clear here saying the oneness here of Christ is according to nature, having one nature and not converted into flesh. He made his indwelling in such a way as we may say that the soul of man does in his own body. Neither do we understand the manner of conjunction to be apposition, for this does not suffice for natural oneness. Here clearly again St. Cyril is saying there is what natural oneness one according to nature, not one according to hypostases, not one according to uh, properties, not one according to essence. Here he clearly is expressing one according to nature, having one nature. And this is what St. Cyril is expressing very clearly here in his third letter to Nestorius, which is also known as the Synodical Letter, very important letter that uh, played a huge role in, at the Council of Ephesus. It was read uh, at the Council at, and accepted at Ephesus, being a conciliar letter. Um, and of course, uh, by the way, uh, in Mephysitism, in our Christology, uh, the way we define a nature is it is a hypostasis. Right? And of course, you have two different types of hypostases or natures. You have a self-subsistent hypostasis and a non-self-subsistent hypostasis. But these are going to be, these are very technical. We're going to go over our Christology in details and the definitions of each of these in, uh, for, in later videos. And today, we're just going to cover cer uh, certain sayings by the church fathers that were congregated at Ephesus and how Chalcedon came to contradict uh, the co-presiders at the Council of Ephesus and the holy bishops that attended the Council of Ephesus and what they had to say about the nature of Christ while they were combating Nestorian, Nestorianism, right? Um, here we see from another co-presider at the Council of Ephesus, St. Theodotus of Ancyra, at his second homily uh, that was read at Ephesus, he says, 
At a divine miracle occurred. The flame in Babylon became dew, and both are seen in the activity. For the three young men were cooled by the dew, whereas the Babylonians were burned by the flame. There were not two things or two natures, but what was seen was one and the same thing. The righteous bear witness, ask not the mode of God's miracles. Here we see very clearly St. Saint, uh, Saint Theodotus of Ancyra saying, these there were not two things or two natures. There were not two things or two natures, but what was seen was one and the same thing, right? So he's saying these are uh, not two natures, but one, right? One and the same thing, one nature, right? Um, very clearly expressed here. This was read at the Council of Ephesus and accepted as a conciliar document of the Council of Ephesus. And of course, anyone who accepts the Council of Ephesus as being an ecumenical council would accept these letters as being authoritative and binding on, on them. And so anyone who uh, believes in the Council of Ephesus should accept the one nature Christology and not the two natures that was expressed at Chalcedon that came to contradict the Holy Council of Ephesus. And lastly here, uh, also from St. Theodotus, in the same homily, he is expressing the One Nature Christology by saying, How did he impoverish himself on our behalf? Let those who separate the manhood from God the Word, parting him who was united by mention of natures who say Christ is two things, introducing for their defense a merely invented unity, let them tell us here, Clearly, we can look at the bold uh, letters uh, and words. St. Theodotus is saying, parting him who was united by, me by mentioning natures in the plural, right? By just mentioning, by mention of natures in the plural, right? They've divided uh, Christ who is united and, and who say Christ is two things, right? Or two natures. Nature is just a concrete reality or a concrete thing, right? And we can we will also cover what how Chalcedonians define nature and 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 um, yeah. So here, basically, Saint Theodotus is saying Christ is not two things. Uh, they're dividing or parting Christ by mentioning of natures in the plural. He's not. Uh, he doesn't have a plurality of natures. He's not two things. Um, but clearly he's one and the same thing or one nature. Uh, this is a very clear expression of Miaphysitism or one nature Christology by St. Theodotus of Ancyra, another co-presider alongside with St. Cyril of Alexandria, bo both uh, Holy Fathers uh, presiding over the Council of Ephesus. I want to go over the next slide here. Um, uh, the presiders of uh, Ephesus affirming one nature, right? Um, there were three co-presiders at the Council of Ephesus, St. Cyril of Alexandria, St. Akakius of Miletine, and St. Theodotus of Ancyra. St. Cyril of Alexandria, there's so many quotations um, of him expressing a one nature view. I'm only going to go over for each of these uh, holy fathers, uh, each of these co-presiders. I'm only going to go over one quote for each of them, clearly expressing a one nature Christology where it cannot be interpreted in, in any other way except uh, there being a one nature Christology for our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, because for each of these, there are so many quotations and so I don't want to quote spam. Uh, I just want to provide a clear expression of their ideas in terms of how they're viewing Christ. So to begin with St. Sir of Alexandria, he's saying here uh, in, in, on the unity of Christ, his magnum opus book, right on page 77, he says, we say there is one son and that he has one nature. Even when he is considered as having assumed flesh endowed with a rational soul. Very clearly here, there's one son, one nature. Even when we are considering the incarnation and the unity between the divinity and the humanity, it all amounts to one nature. Very clear expression of the idea St. Saul has about Jesus Christ having one nature. Moving on, moving on to St. Akakias of Miletine. Uh, he says, Let everyone be forced to publicly anathematize the dogmas of Nestorius and Theodore especially those who say two natures after the union, properly each one working. This is very important here. Uh, St. Uh, Cacius is saying that anyone who says two natures after the union, which is a, a Chalcedonian, which is a Chalcedonian idea, right? The Chalcedonian Christology, they say, the Chalcedonians say that there's two natures after the union. Properly each one working, which is exactly what was expressed at the Tome of Leo and in the Sixth Ecumenical Council in regards to dioenergism and diothelitism, right? Where there's two wills, two activities, two actions for Christ, each one properly working. In the Tome of Leo, in the... Um, a cursed tomb of Leo, um, where Leo says, the cursed Leo says, uh, the, the divine, the quote-unquote, the divine um, 
the divine performs the miracle, right? The divine nature performs the miracle while the human nature succumbs to injuries or something like that. So he's clearly separating and dividing the activities of each nature and what they're performing properly, each one working here, as St. Akakius of Melitine is saying. For of those who are in Germanicia, I have found some experienced, indeed refusing to say two sons, but indeed not refusing to say two natures. Wherefore, it, it be granted that it may be said and taught by them that each nature worketh by itself, and this indeed is suffered, but that remains impassive. There is no other thing than to confess two sons again and bring in the parts. So St. Akagius of Militina is very clearly here saying that there are some who are refusing to say two, nat two sons, but not refusing to say two natures, but that doesn't matter. It's going to be confessing two sons again, even if they're saying two natures, right? Because... And that's the whole point of why Chalcedon is Nestorian in its root. Um, the fundamental basics of Chalcedon is Nestorian, uh, its Christology. Because even if they don't ex explicitly say two sons or two persons or two hypostases for Christ, by entailment when they're saying two natures, it amounts to two persons or two hypostases for our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what St. Akakius of Melitina is expressing here. He's saying that even if you're not saying two sons, but you're, in, but you're saying two natures, by implication or entailment, that is the same as saying two sons. Right, so here we have him anathematizing anyone who says two natures after the union. This is this holy father who presided over the Council of Ephesus, clearly anathema, is anathematizing Chalcedon. Right. Okay, moving on to our third and final co-presider at the Council of Ephesus, who clearly affirmed the one nature Christology. We've covered him in the previous slide in the homilies that were read uh, in the uh, con as part of the conciliar letters that were accepted at, ca at the Council of Ephesus. But here we have another. Uh, saying of Saint Theotokos of Ancyra from his exposition on the Creed. Here he's saying, "You will not ascend to God, O man, unless you confess the descent of God." Paul says, "One he, one is he who descended, and he who ascended, not one and another, but the same is no longer divided, no longer considered two after the union. For he who ascended, he says, is also he who ascended above men, so that he may, might fill all things. The things once contemplated to the economy made one, so then no lo longer say two after the indissoluble union. What grace united, let thought not divide. Here very clearly from the bold le uh, letters and words we can see here, he's saying no longer consider two after the union. There are no two natures after the union. Um, and again, uh, he says the things once contemplated too in, a, in the extra mental realm, in mental speculation and thought, the economy made one. After the union there's a, and the incarnation, there's only one nature, right? Even though in contemplation before, the, apart from the union, there are two, but in reality, after the union, after the incarnation and the economy, there's only one nature. So then no longer say two after the indissoluble union. Very clearly here is St. Theodotus saying, do not say two after the indissoluble union. After the hypostatic union, the union between the divinity and the humanity of Christ, there's only one nature, do not say two. There are no two natures. So here we can clearly see what was uh, running through the minds of the Holy Fathers uh, that presided over the Council of Ephesus, and that is that all three agreed that Christ has one nature and there, there are no two natures after the union. Do not say two natures after the union. But not only that, St. Akakis of Militin actually anathematized anyone who says two natures after the union and thereby anathematizing Chalcedon by entailment, right? And so here we can see the Chalcedonian creed or definition uh, clearly contradicting the Council of Ephesus when they say that and when it says the Chalcedonian Creed acknowledged in two natures, of course, the, the, if you zone in on the proposition in, it's, it's different from of, right? When, when I was stressing it in the previous slides, because when they when when the Chalcedonians say acknowledged in two natures, they're saying there are two natures after the union. However, the Miaphysite Orthodox position is that Christ is of two natures. He's one nature of two natures. The proposition of here denoting oneness after uh, the union between the two, right? So here in the Chalcedonian definition, it says acknowledged in two natures, unconfusedly, unchangeably, indivisibly, inseparably. The difference of the natures being in no way removed because of the union, but rather the properties of in each nature being preserved. Unfortunately, here this has been anathematized by the Holy Fathers, uh, the Council of Ephesus, uh, and also co contradicts the Council of Ephesus and the conciliar letters that were read there. All the conciliar letters and the Holy Fathers congregating at the Council of Ephesus affirmed 
a one nature Christology, they all affirm Miaphysitism and not Diaphysitism or the two nature Christology, which at its root is Nestorian. As St. Akakia said, even if you do not say two sons, but two natures, by entailment, that is two sons. And so that's why Chalcedon is affirming two sons or two persons for our Lord Jesus Christ, just as Nestorius did. Um, and in later videos and in future videos, we're going to cover uh, in more details the, the, diaph the Chalcedonian diaphysitism and how it's not really that different from the Nestorian diaphysitism and how it is actually the same. And, and even uh, in certain layers and in certain um, aspects of their Christology is even more divisive and more, uh, uh, they actually separate Christ more than the Nestorians did, right? Um, and lastly, I want to end this video by saying why Oriental Orthodoxy is true for anyone who's looking for the truth, for anyone who's looking for the true church of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? Who's looking deeper, who wants, you know, the, the authentic church, the, the spirituality, the holiness, the purity that's found within the institution of the church that was founded by our Lord Jesus Christ that we see in the New Testament. Um, you're going to find that the Oriental Orthodox Church is the true church that was instituted by Christ and his apostles in the New Testament. And that is because the Oriental Orthodox Church preserved the authentic Orthodox Christology of the Council of Ephesus and the Holy Church Fathers who presided over that council, right? And so uh, there is no other church that has preserved Miaphysitism or the One Nature Christological view. Everyone else followed the impious, accursed Council of Chalcedon that affirmed the accursed doctrine of Diophysitism or Nestorianism. And so this is why the Oriental Orthodox Church stands out and it has existed since the first century. We have apostolic succession in, in all sister churches of the Oriental Orthodox Church going back from the first century, not deviating one centimeter, right? Not deviating at all from the orthodoxy of the early church instituted by Jesus Christ, including the Christology, which was the focal point of the schism that happened at Chalcedon. And studying these schisms, you will find that the, per, that the people who were responsible uh, over those schisms were the people who deviated from the Oriental Orthodox Church. Um, especially at what happened at Chalcedon when they affirmed the impious doctrine of Nestorius, uh, Nestorius's diaphysitism or to nature Christology. So for anyone who is looking for the truth or, you know, the one and only holy apostolic church of our Catholic church of our Lord Jesus Christ, the universal church that was instituted in the first century in the New Testament by Christ and his apostles, you will find it in the Oriental Orthodox Church. I just want to thank everyone, and um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and comment down below and, uh, so that I can also respond to your comments and we can have a, a good, cordial, and respectful dialogue and discussions uh, going on. I hope everyone is doing very well. Please pray for me, and God bless you all.